So second day of PRI is in the bag, and uh, in front of me is a 540 that you, some of y'all might have noticed looks a little bit different than the one that we normally have on display uh, in our booth. It's a little bit shorter, and that's because this is a fuel-injected 540. The other one is a carbureted unit. We actually have that one on loan in the Pro Charger booth uh, on display. So if you're actually at, at PRI, you can go by the Pro Charger booth and take a look at that one, and then come back over here and take a look at this one. Uh, just because of the fact that we have two 540s at the same event and all assembled ready to go, uh, I wanted to do a same but different segment on these just to give you an idea of, of what, to, uh, what to expect. So we offer kind of a, a variety of uh, engine layouts just because of the fact that these go in, you know, your race cars, not everyone's race car is the same. So you've got dragsters on up to, you know, full chassis door cars and then pro mods and, you know, everything high low and in between. Even some of you crazy guys like to race trucks. So starting off from the front, of course, this one still has a Pro Charger F3 uh, setup. Uh, of course, the drive unit is a little bit different than the one that we have over in the Pro Charger booth. This one here is actually a uh, crank drive unit and so this is actually more in line with the actual line of the crank the other one that we have in the pro charger booth is a race drive so that actually kicks the pro charger up a little bit higher which is not too terribly you know bad of a deal just because of the fact that it's still going to be higher just to deal with the blow through carburetor that's on uh, the other in, uh, on the other unit so of course this is still coupled to the crankshaft you have a spline as well as your gearbox. Now, of course, depending upon what you run for your gears will kind of dictate what, how much boost you're gonna be making. So speaking of boost, this goes through your charge pipe into your intake, whether it be carbureted or fuel injected. This one does not have an intercooler and same for the other one, just because of the fact that these run on alcohol or methanol. Uh, the, the actual fuel is going to be charged or cooling the air charge instead of using an intercooler. That decreases weight. So less weight means you get to go faster. So anyway, uh, this one goes through a Wilson manifold. The other one is going to be using a APD blow through carburetor. Uh, so that takes care of your throttle control plus fueling kind of a big deal. Uh, and then this one on this engine uses a Thompson Motorsports intake. And of course you have your fuel rails on the side. This is one injector per hole. These use billet atomizers. We do have some options on using more than one injector per hole. Uh, we've done dual injectors where you can run race gas on one and then methanol on the secondary. So that way on a fuel tech or I think think on a Holly, I'll have to double check on that. Uh, we've been able to blend in the fuel from race gas to methanol once boost is referenced, which is really nice. So that way you're not having to run all your methanol even while you know cruising along in uh, the strip or the shutdown area or anything. And it just kind of makes it more economical. Also lower maintenance. Uh, on this one, you'll notice it has a weird stubby thing on the back of this intake manifold. And that's a blank because normally you have a distributor on the back, which is run by the cam gear. But this one is just a blank, but it still runs the oil pump down in the oil pan. So of course the other one has a distributor. All of that is taken care of as far as uh, your, your ignition concerns on that one. Now, talking about the oil pan, this one is a little bit different because this one uses a regular wet sump oil pan. The other one is a little bit more low slung, and so that customer is actually running a dry sump system, which is really, you know, a neat option just because of the fact that oil control and windage control is extremely important, especially when you're trying to make power. It's something that we've seen time and time again. And so on the front of that one, the oil, the dry sump uh, pumps, the multiple stage setup is actually attached to the front of the crank drive system, or on that one it is a race drive system. And so 
there's a, a wide variety of ways of being able to attach different components, whether it be oil pumps or fuel pumps, alternators, uh, especially for some of y'all that are going to be using things in, you know, more street cars that are set up. Uh, and so, you know, we have a, a wide variety of ways of being able to execute these, these engines for you. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, make a comment down below in the comment section. Uh, if you are interested in having a uh, engine set up for yourself for your own race car, uh, feel free to give us a call in the race shop or shoot us an email or leave us a message and uh, we'll get you squared away. Uh, once again, thanks for checking out one of our tech videos. This one's a little bit different, but kind of the same, same but different. So uh, maybe I'll be able to have some more content for you tomorrow for the last day at PRI. But in the meantime, uh, keep, an, keep your eyes peeled for anything else that we've got, and thanks for watching.